There we go. I've got a little icon there. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind the Shift. I'm your host, Anders Bolling, and um, in this episode, I'm really happy to introduce James Finney, uh, um, a new friend of mine from from England. Um, he's an expert on his own life, which uh, <laughs> is more than <laughs> many of us can say. And I think that he's also an expert on many other people's lives, which we will come come to. Uh, so let's just begin there. Who are you, James Finney? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where do you live? What, what do you work with? And what, who are you? <laughs> Well, I think I need to be able to answer that question about myself first before I could broadcast it to anyone else. Um, who am I? I'm a being trapped in a body that is fumbling around trying to work out what everything else is doing at the same time. Oh, that's poetic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm. Um, I'm a. What could I say? I am. Mm, who am I? I am a being that wants to help others and enlighten others but in a in a positive no, i don't want to sound hippie by saying positive i mean in a fun kind of way there's too much serious positivity going on i like to do it in a in a relaxed kind of manner but does that answer yeah. your question as to who i am I, well it does i mean it, it, it it's a profound answer to a to a question that you could find shallow maybe if you want. I mean, yeah. it's, it depends on how you want to answer it. You can also yeah. tell us a little bit about where you live and, and all that. And uh, okay. if you have a job, in that case, what, what are you working with? All right, well, I live in Shrewsbury in England. Uh, there's a huge debate in the locale about, is it Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury? Most of us here call it Shrewsbury. Um, I, I trade on eBay, I just basically sell Nikon cameras and lenses, that's my living. Um, but it is just a living. It's not exciting. No matter how good the cameras are, I still get a little bit bored in regards to, oh, I've got to do that today. Um, so yeah, that's what I do here. I'm at the age of 45. I've, I personally probably hit the midlife crisis when I was about 11 and I've been fighting through it ever since. Yeah, you told me that in, a, in a, my little pre-interview form right here, that you peaked when you were 11, then after that you've just declined for 34 years. That sounds really <laughs> dramatic. I mean, I can't a, even yeah. imagine. Well, that's also funnily said because you're a funny, funny guy, but but I guess there's there's some truth to it, uh, although I, I can't really believe that you actually peaked when you were 11. But You don't know how happened? big that peak was, do you? No, I don't know how big that peak was. It might have been huge. Yes, that's mm, true. Could have been, yes. That's what, um, that was when you met the Pope. Huh? Yeah, that, that's the peak in everyone's life, isn't it? When you meet the Pope, even, uh, yeah, when, exactly. Jesus him, yes. when Jesus met him. Yes. When Jesus met the Pope. Uh, in regards to me, um, yeah, no, I'd say my potentiality peaked at 11. And then I have not lived up to it. It's been a sort of a burden or an albatross around my neck since. Because I know that I have potential to do something. But I haven't quite got my act together to do it. And I've just been trapped in a chaos ever since. Although in the recent months, I'm gradually getting out of that chaos. Identifying things in life that are worth going for. And disregarding all the other noise, as it were. So I am bringing a bit of order. I have hit the trough and I'm gradually mm. on the climb and hopefully I can get to that peak before my body gives out. So I, I hope that would happen this lifetime. And maybe past that 11 year peak also and go yeah. further up. Yeah, maybe. If, if I get anywhere near that, that would be good. You mentioned that you, you went bankrupt at, once, at one point. Two points at, at two, two times, <laughs> twice, two, two bankruptcies. Twice the bankrupt. Yes, oh, um, I actually. You're came an expert out on bankruptcies. Uh, I'm an expert on failure. Yes, I'm very good at that. Um, I came out of, I believe, officially a week or two ago out of my second bankruptcy. Um, it's no real different to when I was in the bankruptcy. I, I still have to make a living, but yeah, I've uh, I've hit the low on that. It's not a publicly stated thing. Um, 
I, I don't communicate it, but what's that between you and me and the internet? You know, it's um, yeah, that that's what's recently occurred. And I know that you are just like I am now starting your own podcast and uh, you, you have to tell us a little bit more about that. But I know that you, your intention is to, to have conversations with people who are, many of them at least, uh, in the same situation or have the same kind of mindset as you yes. think that you have and that, that you, in this capacity, can, can help people getting out of that. Uh, the, you, you were, I think you were supposed to, you were, you were first thinking of calling it the thinking trap, but then you changed Yes. Change that to a more more kind of humorous uh, title. I changed it because the thinking trap, like you were saying about to meet like-minded folk. If yeah. you're not successful, I think the worst thing you can do is surround yourself by like-minded folk um, because you're just going to remain there. You need to get onto the coats and tails of people who are slightly above that, that are accessible to you. So that's what I'm doing in that regard is, is um, if, I'd have, if I'd have carried on with the thinking trap, it would have been a trap. And I don't know whether I could have progressed and flourished out of it. Whereas doing my podcast now in regards to the best a man can get, it's always a potentiality. It's always something ahead to be working towards, no matter where you are in the scale of life. If you're down and out, there's still some way but there's a long, a long way for you to go. Or if you're already climbing, there's still other places to go. So that's what I wanted to do. And I got the best reality on me. So middle-aged UK male, I have a good reality on what it's like to be one of those. So maybe I'm best skilled to talk about that as opposed to other stuff that people talk about, you know, politics, whatever. It's not my bag. I don't understand that field. I know a little bit about humans, um, but yeah. So I want. Well, to, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to do something that's um, both rewarding to self, that gives me a sense of excitement and something to look forward to in a day. Um, and meeting and communicating with people, I've found, is my most uplifting thing. I love mm. seeing people flourish. So yeah, that's it. I really. love that. I love that. I, I think you. it's uh, you were completely right to change the name from the thinking trap to to uh, the best a man can get because I, I believe that you're right the, that the, your mindset is actually what is uh, what is uh, steering your life in the background uh, I mean what you <laughs> to speak a bit new ages ageish mm. maybe uh, what you emit is what you get back uh, I, I actually yeah believe that and you would you were saying also something about before here uh, you were saying something about um, the, the definition of depression is when when you I think you were referring to was it uh, what's his name Grant Cardone he yes. said he said yes. that 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 uh, not being true to one's potential is the definition of depression because when you realize, when you know that you, you, you are actually here to do something completely different than what you're doing, then, then you really get depressed. And it's uh, the trick is to get out of that, that, that's, well, that's a thinking trap, I guess, but you have yes. to get out of it. Yeah. yeah. That was when I've had my dark days, which had been plenty. If I was to analyze and pick out, out of each of those days or the point at which I'd gone from happy to, caved in it was always a case of the trigger was either continuing a lie doing something i wasn't in agreement with um relationships or friendships i was not in agreement with d committing to things i wasn't in agreement with but i i was going along with it anyway for keeping the peace or being acceptable or nice and that just led to a, a downright heavy depression whereas if i just kick back and do what I want to do and have fun with it, the depressive element doesn't exist. Uh, and then that, what you were saying about Grant Cardone, he was in a, an interview with a guy called Ed Milet, who's a, a big insurance sales guy in America. And Grant was very um, clear in what he said there. And that was sort of, it resonated with me. It's like the times that he feels depressed is when he's not being true to himself. And mm. I think I don't want to evaluate or judge for other people 
in their situations. But I think you can pretty much nail it within a short conversation that the reason that that person is down is because they're not being true to their purpose. Uh, they don't like their job. They don't like the relationship. They don't like this or that or that. Well, you're going to have to get out of it. Yeah. And some people are so kind and nice that they will kill themselves in sufferance so as not to offend or upset others. Mm. And that's not good for anyone. Um, I've become clear on that recently in what I've seen in my life and others. So, yeah, Are you good at detecting help. other people's uh, inner, inner feelings and drives? Yeah, unfortunately, I, I see it as a curse. I, um, I pick things up on people pretty much straight away. Um, however, I have to go lightly in how I communicate that because you can't evaluate or judge for someone because that's I consider to be grossly rude. You can't say, mm. oh, you're a blah, 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 or you've got this. That doesn't work for people. They just resist and hate you. Whereas if you maybe ask a question that could sort of, it's like you're holding a map and you're just putting the map to them and going, have a look. Uh, that's a much more productive way, I think, when someone discovers an aha moment for themselves instead of you giving them an aha moment, which mm -hmm. just doesn't work. It just ends up with resentment. Yeah. Everybody has to find out for themselves. If they want uh, to. It only works to. Exactly. if they want to. Exactly. Yeah. You have to want to. Yeah. Do you think maybe they, many many people, may, perhaps yourself before, also uh, kind of mix up uh, or there's a misconception that if you if you don't do if you don't please others and if you don't do as others say to be kind to be nice uh, you you will uh, end up uh, living a miserable life because because the purpose of life is to to make others happy uh, because that's what you've learned in school and when you grew up and everything but uh, the misconception is that you can't actually truly make others happy unless you can make yourself happy first i mean you <laughs> It's really when you think about it, you know this. Everybody knows this if you think deeply about it, because you 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 actually get happy by looking at other people's other other people being happy. That's when yes. you, when you can feel happiness yourself. So it's it's actually it's a misconstruction, it's a misunderstanding of how this whole thing works. Don't you think? Yeah, it's it's either a misunderstanding or a deliberate structure, so one cannot understand. Um, I feel like if you look at the basics of like a baby, a baby is only self-aware. And then after weeks, it becomes aware of mother. It becomes aware of father or whatever in this modern age. Uh, and then a family and then other children. And, and it gradually becomes more and more aware. Um, and I feel that's how you should approach it for yourself. Because if you skip the first step of you, the rest of it isn't really going to matter anyway. Uh, because you're excluding yourself from all other parts of life. That doesn't work. You have to both cover yourself and look for your family and look for your community and look out and beyond that in order to have any, I feel, uh, productive and able life. If you start cutting things out or sacrificing yourself, uh, you're just ruining everything. Mm. Um, yeah. M m maybe... It's, I mean, you were referring to small babies, which is interesting. I think it's also a wise thing to do because I, I sometimes think that they, they might know something that we, or we all know that when we are born, these, these basic uh, things about life and how it works. And then we gradually forget them because we are conditioned to think in a certain way by our yeah. parents, by our school, by school, by the, this whole matrix. And what they know, the, the, I mean, the, the most principal thing the thing that they know they, that is that we are all connected in a way and yes. i believe that actually which is also a reason why you can't really love anybody else unless you love yourself and when 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 you say that you have to love yourself before you can love others then people get a bit upset because they i think they misunderstand what you what what you say when you say that because they think that oh you you mean you, you should be an e egotistical and you should always think about yourself and all that but th that's not that's not the thing because loving yourself means that love love yourself with all the flaws that you have with the whole the whole back the whole thing yes if you can do that and be, be be just be fine with whatever you are then you can start loving other people otherwise it doesn't work yeah well if you're if you're a member of a group you are a part of that group so 
you would love all members of your group. Therefore, you being a member of the group, you should also be a recipient of your love. If you wanted to sound that sort of, or go that hippie kind of way. Yeah. Um, I think the problem we have uh, in this day and age is the word love itself has a very tainted connotation from the 60s that is pushed back against us, that it means uh, a disregarding, um, it, it doesn't like law, it's a dirty, it's a druggy type experiment. There's all these little taints that I think come with the word love these days that if you were to say self-love, it immediately causes a uh, a recoil in people because they've been trained to sort of, oh, that's, uh, even I myself, you know, even words like religion, I've had, I've got, mm, even though it makes sense or whatever, there's, there's certain words that just trigger a reaction. And love is one of those things that does trigger, I think, socially, a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to take back that word. Yeah, or clear it, it properly in a good dictionary. Clear it, yeah, exactly. Yes. Make it common, make it uh, <laughs> yeah. yes. less, less dramatic, perhaps. Absolutely. And, uh, so, well, the thing, what you're talking about now make, um, leads me to a, a question I had uh, about your, your experience of adversity throughout mm. your life. Do you think, uh, how, how unique do you think that is? Do you think it's that, that you have had unusually many problems or are you actually an example of what is very common today? Or, and that's the first part of the question. The second part would be how much, how, 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 How much of this, of these adversities, uh, is a result of that you are a, a white male living in the Western world in, tw in, in the 2020s or in the 2000s? Yeah. And what is just you? Okay, that's a big question. Right. <laughs> Two, yeah, twofold question. You should, never, you should never ask questions like that. I, I, I know, but sorry. Sorry no, about right, that. Totally fine. I, I think I can, uh, I can bat that one that you've thrown that pitch at me. Okay, so the first question. Um, run that by me again. Just that first element. Well, the first element was that, uh, well, how unique are you in this? Or do uh, you think it's, it's, it's very common to, to have these, I mean, not exactly the same amount of problems perhaps and adversities, but, but to feel this way that, oh, I don't, I don't really. Yeah, no, I get you. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it, you, I think it's quite an egotistical thing to say, yeah, that's unique and specific to me. I think in general, we all have that phenomena it's just at what time what quantity or frequency do you have those events um and it's also to a lesser or greater degree how much influence you've had on it uh, you could keep your you know if let's say if in my 20s i chose to keep safe and stay low and be quiet and stick out a job until either i retire get killed or made redundant and I just stick at that job and I work up and build my little house and all my little knickknacks in that house. Um, is that the same as everyone else? Could be, but it's down to me in uh, sticking my head up and going, well, okay, I'm not happy with that. I'll go and do something else. I've done that a lot. Uh, one great employer I worked for in the interview because my concern was that I'd had lots of jobs and his point of view was well you just haven't found what you're looking for and maybe this job will be it and I'm happy to take that chance on you and it was good it did pay off uh, and then after a year obviously I, I moved on uh, to pursue something even more bigger and daft um, but no I think we all have the similar uh, problems But uh, it's a case of how many problems you want to look at. I, I, I could invent lots of problems and look at lots of problems. Uh, some people will only want to invent one problem and obsess over that. Mm. We're all different in that regard. We are maybe from the same source point, but I think our point of view is wildly different. Have you ever thought, thought that, that maybe everyone has about the same amount of adversities and, and problems, but they kind of, uh, I mean, if, from their own perspective, uh, Well, I guess that's not true, but but you, you might theoretically everyone might have that inner feeling of uh, being disappointed uh, every other day and 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 being depressed and being uh, unhappy once in a while. Um, 
Although from the outside, if you look at it from the outside, it looks as if these people are so successful and so happy. Yeah. But because I mean, what it really comes down to is how you how you experience it yourself. What you feel, what you're feeling inside. It doesn't yeah. really matter if you if you're rich or, well, of course, if you don't have it, food enough to eat. I mean, then we, you would starve to death, and that's 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 a problem. Then your life would be very short. But but I mean, other than that, uh, I mean, if you have you have you have food, you have a house to live in, uh, maybe a small house, maybe just a shelter. But but you you might be, I mean, from the outside, it seems as if you have so many problems. But maybe you're happy anyway. Well, I think uh, if life is a game, then the barriers are the game. Um, and if you want to play a big game, you need big barriers. Uh, if you're not a big game player, you'll just want little barriers like, uh, can I save up enough money to go for a coffee at the end of the week? That is your game. Another person may go, well, I want to buy that company for X amount of million and it needs to be done by Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That's their game. The mechanics are all the same. It may be just the level of volume or the quantity of energy involved is the differing thing. I think we're all, we arrive on this planet with the same rights, but do we arrive here with the same quantity of being? You know, like, are some people a little glass, uh, mouse-like uh, volume of being, whereas other people are just a big lorry full of it? I think that is a, a differing thing, but the mechanics as a human is probably the same across the board in everything. Yeah, can you, can you, yeah, well, when you look back now on, on your, all your bankruptcies and other problems yes. and yeah. whatever happened, can you see them as lessons now? Uh, or can you, or do you just, I, I mean, I, I know that you love to, to make jokes about how terrible everything is, <laughs> which is really yeah. funny. It's, uh, it's always funny when someone makes jokes about themselves and, and their shortcomings, but anyway. It's a mechanism to deal with it. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I would go mad and I would be dribbling uh, in a jacket, getting electric shock therapy or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but having a humor to deal with it does help because it means, I think a fundamental in humor is that you, you don't accept the reality in front of you. And that's why people laugh. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's two ingredients to laughter I read once. I've never found it a questionable thing since. It's either an element of surprise or the reality in front of you, you just can't accept. And mm. then you laugh. So if I refuse to accept my failings before me, uh, then I will just laugh at it because it, it's it's an unacceptable reality. Um, so, yeah, that's why I find humor in that. Um, and that's probably my coping mechanism for it. And, and I think th there's the old Greek philosophy that laughter is the best medicine. And I think it is because if you can... If someone has a lot of things that have gone wrong and you can get into a point where they refuse to accept it by laughing, then their attention is shifted off it and maybe they can change direction as opposed to... That's true. Them. So that's probably how I see it. I don't analyze it as such, but when you ask the question, that's how I'm thinking right now as, as a probable cause or reason. And of course... It's all about laughing with somebody, not laughing at somebody. Yeah, that, that doesn't help at all. Uh, even though sometimes I do want to laugh at people, I think if you can involve everyone in the joke, it probably goes a lot better. Mm. You know, like I could pick on a politician and laugh at them, mm. but I think it's better to involve the people who are observing the politician to laugh at them. Mm. And to get them to realize what they're seeing is is laughable and that they shouldn't be accepting it, as opposed to just attacking someone and putting them down. It's often easy to laugh at, at uh, decision makers and politicians and people like that, of course. It's yeah. something we, we do all the time and it's, and it's, it's, it's um, uh, encouraged, actually, to do that. And I can... Yeah. I can do that too sometimes because I mean sometimes it's so obvious that they have they have said s such stupid things like I mean yeah some people some people in some presidential uh, residences in the United States for instance but um, <laughs> no names uh, okay but they, I mean they're 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 also human beings and I can I can actually yeah which is 
I don't know what that says about me, but I can identify with these decision makers sometimes. I can I can think that okay, I could have could could have been me maybe. I mean that's a bit egotistical to say, but yeah. but I, I mean I think it could have been many of us. It doesn't. I mean I I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to be a boss of a big company. I don't want to because I want to be free. And I know that I wouldn't be happy if I were that. But I mean, I have the capacity. I could, I could have been one of those. I could have. So I can sometimes feel a bit sorry for them because I mean, they're they're up there and they're trying to s- decide over tens tens of millions of people. And it's not that easy. I think it's not that simple to just uh, make everyone happy. Sixty million yeah. people in the United Kingdom. Half of them want want to leave the United the European Union. Half want to stay. So what? Yes. What, sh- what should one do? Uh, well, but it, sometimes it sounds it sounds funny. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, like you could look at American politics. Well, let's have a laugh at the voter, not not the politician. Because after all, it's the voter that chose them. It's the people yeah. who accepted that system. It's the people mm. who sponsor and give money to that system. Let's just mock them. There's, the politician, at least they made the effort to start. Um, and many of them do start off with the right intention. And I expect further on down the line, once they be, once you're into a network of liars and deceit, your whole reality of what the world is is probably not going to be of any use to anyone. You know, uh, you could set into an office of being the president of the United States, but how many people around you are going to be on your side? How many people are going to be telling you the truth every day? It, it's it'll be an insane asylum because how can you win or control or gain influence in the direction that you are mandated with if you're just surrounded by people who are protecting their own self interests, people who've got commitments to other things? It's it's an impossible rat's nest. I, I mm. you know, I I don't know how you could actually go into that office thinking and believing that you can change it because I'm sure after a hundred days you're going to be like, oh god, what am I going to do now? So yeah, and when it, it comes to the incumbent yeah. in the United States right now, he I mean he he sacks everyone who says who doesn't like what he's what he thinks anyway. So. Is that uh, as in Mr. Biden? Uh, Mr. Biden? No. Yeah, is, that, is that the man you mean? or? Well, the man who's in charge right now. Um, oh, okay. Mr. 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 Trump. Yeah, well, is, maybe, I said the incumbent. Isn't that the word? The incumbent? No, I think the incumbent's the one on the way in. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think in his regard, though, yeah, he probably has to sack them if they're, if they're not turning out to be doing the job that they said they could do. Mm-hmm. Should he tolerate it for four years? If someone can't do a job, would you accept them? To well, remain? not do the job, but, but but I mean, he should surround himself with people who can who can tell him truths and to tell him that uh, this was a bad choice and you should yes. go in this direction instead. Yeah. So. Um, but there we go. Yeah. There not we much, go. <laughs> not much fun in American politics. <laughs> no, I know. No. Well, so, except, um, to be fair, actually, no. Joe Biden. He's he's got he's a source point of many a laugh. I've got to be honest there. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's comedy gold. He, he really is. He's comedy gold. Yeah, yeah. He is. He, he's not leadership gold, but he's comedy gold. He's just. I mean, I th- I think he realizes himself that he's more like a stepping, <laughs> s- stepping stone. He to realizes. Else. <laughs> I don't think he's realized anything for a long time. No, he doesn't realize. He doesn't realize what he realizes. No, he's just not capable. He he's just runs capable. on senses. He's just like, his <laughs> nose will pick things up. He touches things. And that's it. He's very, very base. He's just like okay. uh, like something that's... Anyway, let's not get there because I, I am attacking him. <laughs> but uh, I think sometimes people deserve it. Um... Oh, talking about the world, uh, yes. you know that this this podcast of mine is supposed to yes. uh, revolve a bit around uh, what I call the cozy darkness of the apocalypse. You know that we actually that I'm the world is actually you're very familiar <laughs> with that, yes, <laughs> on a yeah. personal level. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, that's the question actually. I mean, how much yeah. of your ailments, or your ailments, is that the word? Is that the word? It is, but that would be more like a physical level. Ah, oh, physical. I was sorry. Yeah. Uh, you're, wow. Like my ugliness. That would be an ailment. Go with the old word problems then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha, ha, has to have to do with um, how you, I mean, have you, have you been uh, feeling, uh, uh, have you felt resentment towards the world itself or is it just towards what has been happening in your life, in your personal life, or have you directed this... Uh, this resentment towards the world and the, mm. you told me before that you hate the news, for instance. So oh, can God, you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Um, 
I don't watch it. I don't have a T in the UK. We have to have a TV license, which means you pay a large fee for the right to turn on your television, uh, which is a very bizarre. Um, well, we had it here too until just a couple of years ago. Oh, you're a progressive country, though, aren't you? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of rationality in Sweden. They're, they're, over here, there's um, yeah, it, it's borderline psychosis. Well, let's talk about that later. But yeah, yeah, tell me more about the the world and the news. Mm. News. Um, I think to sum it up, I, I was speaking with someone yesterday about this, and my I have an inclination that what we're seeing right now is like. Obviously, we have polarities and we have conflicts of black v. white, men v. women, and the media are pushing these polarities. But I think the biggest polarity that's coming in very quickly that is not being seen is the polarity between intellect and no intellect, between uh, being subservient and being questionable. People who are observing what's going on over the last six months are getting more and more isolated and pushed away and are becoming more targeted. It's as if you're going to be punished for being aware. If you are questioning what you see, you're a target. If you're not wearing a mask, you're questionable. And I think we're going to get to the point where the very smart people are either going to be taken away for rebellious reasons or they're just going to have a breakdown, or they'll take their own life. It's That's how the world seems to be pushing those that can see into a corner. That's uh, a very polarized way of seeing things. Yeah, but I just feel that there is a war on intellect right now. You know, all okay. doctors, the doctors that are looking mm. at things from a rational standpoint, pushed away. Uh, science, rational point of view science or science that's been around for a proper long time is being pushed away for knee-jerk stuff and it's all very, very watered down very simplistic stuff and that's what people should focus on it just seems to be that there's a war on intellect right now that's But who are, the ones, who are the ones pushing away these, these wise people? Uh, the ones that want control, I would expect, because you don't want anyone questioning authority or pointing out the obvious, because they're a danger or liability. So you would remove them, you'd label them, and then have them removed. I feel that's what's going because on. Because I have a problem. I, yeah, well, I have a problem with this "we" and "them" uh, talk that many, many, hmm. many depict the world in that way. That that that, that, there, that there is a "we" and a, and and a "them." They, yeah, we and are they, and who are we and who are they? I mean, I can't really see the the line. Yeah, there. am I part of the we or the, the the they or? That's the idea, though, isn't it? You're not meant to know because if you knew, you would probably be the they. Yeah, that's uh, true. You, you'd be in on their group, uh, yeah. the group that the group that wants to communicate will only communicate with the people who are fitting the um, the parameters and acceptable standards for that group. Yeah, like and if you're. Paradigm. Yeah, if you're easily sold, if you're corruptible by nature, then you'll probably know. Whereas if you're a, an honest being with integrity and a, a working philosophy, you will not be invited into the loop because what use are you? You, you wouldn't be, they couldn't manipulate you, so you wouldn't be of any use. Uh, but if when you talk about they, are you looking to name names? Because there's always the commoner guard names. But I personally expect the real names, the real people, with the people that we don't know about you know we, we have the high profile names the big big financial hitters but I, I think they're probably just puppets or faces for something else that we mm. may not know or ever understand but i don't mm. think the philosophies that are being pushed i don't think they're of human origin it doesn't make sense th these things um but that's a whole other discussion that's a whole other question about, yeah yeah well, you, that's, you were asking that's about interesting i know I, yeah but i know that there are there are these uh, thinkings out there and these philosophies and these uh, worldviews and uh, that's yeah well maybe that's another path to walk down another time but yeah i think I we think should get our own a, lives in order first before yeah, we start yeah. uh, getting that you know uh, yeah. i have um a house that's in disarray or my head's slightly still in disarray I think I need to bring order in that before I start taking on the community and then branching out. Yeah. I do think there's groupthink and uh, group pressure, oh, yeah. which is yeah. very strong. And, and yes. I mean, that's bad enough. 
that can expl explain a lot of what's going on when yes. around this, for instance, this pandemic, how it's handled around the, around the world. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of group think among uh, politicians and and also among uh, experts. That's why I feel it but, doesn't work. But as you know, Sweden is a, an interesting case in point because it's it, we had a little bit different uh, approach, a different approach, and which means that it's not. I mean, it's not completely unanimous what's happening. So, mm -hmm. and, and Sweden is a democracy has been a democracy for a long time, and it's it's a normal, ordinary Western country with a with a government and with elections and all those things that. Britain, France, Germany, Norway, Denmark, Finland, all these other countries have as well. But but they opted for this this uh, tough lockdown uh, mm. thing, uh, and we didn't. So I mean, it's not it's not it's not unanimous. But there is one little difference, uh, uh, technical technically or not technically, but but um, administratively, because in Sweden it's. Uh, it works in the way that it's we don't we ministers in the government can't rule directly so it has to go by no. way of of the uh, administration so okay. it's the administration that 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 does the work on the ground so to speak and uh, if right. if a minister tells uh, an authority to do to, to do things in in a very detailed way then it's this minister is is going to be uh, not not indicted but i mean going to be cri criticized because it's, okay. it's called minister minister rule and it's, that's not that's not something you do in sweden it's since the 17th century or something like that and i know that in even in norway and denmark it's, it works differently so ministers can decide that now we are going to lock down the country but you can't uh, a swedish minister can't do that well i guess everything is possible anything is possible but, but swedish government decided to do it the the traditional Swedish way. So we said, oh, it's the it's the health uh, authorities that have the say here. So we'll do whatever they suggest that we do. So and they said, no, no complete lockdown, just step by step, little things, and uh, keep distance and all that. You said Sweden's the same as other as other European nations. I don't think it is. I think there's a lot of things I see in the Swedish mentality, the way you guys act, the way you guys live. I wouldn't consider you to be almost to the same degree as I wouldn't consider the UK to be part of Europe in the way that people paint it. I think Sweden is its own very unique culture. It's not... You, you mean say, even, more, even even different from the other Scandinavian countries? Yeah. How, how, have you been here to Sweden? No. Have you been no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just from, from you, the people I've met. You've read on the internet. Seen. No, no, yeah. it's people I've met, the people I yeah. communicate to. And when I see where they live and how they live and how they conduct themselves... It's very different from the rest of Europe. It's as if mm -hmm. Sweden, yes, you're ge geographically you're connected, but I don't see you as being European, uh, the mm -hmm. same as the UK would be considered European. Um, no, I, I think there's qualities in, uh, to, to the Swedish culture that are, are fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, like like, like what? Like what? For instance, um, the attention to aesthetics that I see in you guys, uh, you're always dressing okay. well. I, I've never met a scruffy or I've never met a Swede who looks like he's just come out of some bushes. <laughs> never seen that. Your your homes and the way you do it, um, always organized, uh, very precise. Um, Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Maybe it's... Maybe it's I uh, think it's good. It's good. It brings order. Thing. No, no, no. It um, order to life. But that's the whole game, isn't it? Otherwise, you just have chaos. Uh, that would just be randomity. That, I, I feel humans are there to... Uh, we make progress by bringing order and understanding things. I think that's how we make progress. Um, but And also, I think intellect. In Sweden, I, I don't know the numbers. I'm just going to go wild out there, and I would expect that Swedes probably speak more languages than other European nations. Well, I know that Swedes often end up high on the on the list of uh, people's being proficient in English, yeah. uh, 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 along with the Dutch, I think, and the Norwegians and the Danes and some right. other, so that's true. and also your education system, I believe, scores highly, and your healthcare system scores highly in all. Well, the edu edu both of those have actually been falling on the lists, and and we have a lot of discussion <laughs> in, in this country about how bad it is. Okay. Uh, Sweden was actually. Actually, um, what is the word for it? Well, falling dramatically on the on the list of um, 
high school uh, results. Uh, there, okay. there, there are some tests, international tests called, the, one is called the PISA test. Right. The PISA test and, and uh, Sweden was scoring well until maybe in the year two, 2000 or something like that. But after okay. 2003, it just fell. It's gone up a little bit now, but so there's a big deb debate about uh, bad Swedish schools. And one thing that is interesting about Sweden is a bit, is a bit where we actually differ a little bit from even the other Scandinavian and Nordic countries is that we tend to be very modern in the way that we, we are not very afraid of experimenting with new ways of doing things. So we're yeah. not very nostalgic and very few Swedes are particularly nationalistic. I mean, there, we have a nationalist party today, which is fairly big actually, but I think they kind of, they kind of uh, summon up, summon up all, all the, the people that are nationalists in this country, but ma most others aren't, aren't really very nationalistic uh, in, in the traditional sense, and they don't wave flags and things like that. They don't look <laughs> back very much. So they, we have, I, I don't really like to say we actually, be, but I am a Swede. I, I've lived in Sweden practically all my life. So I guess I, I will have to say we in this case, uh, but people living in this country tend to look towards the future more than, 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 than backwards. And um, we often, uh, both in, in uh, technologi technological matters and in political matters and uh, economic matters, we, we, we try new things and experiment with new kinds of uh, solutions and all that. So we have done yeah. some good things, but also some uh, not so good experiments, I guess. Like in, in the school world, we, um, Sweden, um, decided to uh, open up for more, more private, private schools and to have this um, school peng. It's a, it's a bag of money that, that comes with every pupil and the pupil or the pupil's uh, parents can decide whichever school they want to go to. So the, the money follows them okay. uh, wherever it goes, which has meant that some schools in poor suburbs, for instance, have lost a lot of money and okay. haven't been able to to educate the the their children as well as, as before. So, I mean, that okay. hasn't been brilliant, but they're, they're rolling back some of that stuff now. But I, I mean, generally, it is a country where, well, people are looking f looking towards the future quite a lot. And that's perhaps something that is sp specifically Swedish. Could yeah. be, actually. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, that's good. Uh, whereas uh, in the UK, we seem to be very nostalgic and uh, and the stuck on things from like 50 60 years ago or oh, we built concord yes where is concord right now it's yeah, where is a concord? runway doing nothing it's brilliant well done um yeah there's so many things that i think britain just stopped in the 70s and then it's just been drinking beer ever since i cast a then there was there. Then, then there was cool britannia in the 90s was it mm, definitely um oddly enough though i wasn't a member of that <laughs> no. i didn't really like it um I liked other forms of music, but now looking back on it, I'm like, yeah, that was pretty good actually. To be fair, mm -hmm. yes. And the, the the Labour Party in that time at that time they modernised politics, didn't they? A little bit. In the well, everyone hates Tony Blair now, of course, but I mean, at the time <laughs> when at he the arrived, time, he was amazing. Yes, he, amazing he is man. the man. That, yes, um, yeah, that was... attacked Iraq. Yeah, yeah, that's. Um, I remember as a student, we were all protesting against that. But you look back and you go, like, what was the point of that then? Because they just went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah. Uh, may as well just stayed in college for the day. What was the point? Um, yeah. And nowadays we have the lockdown. And uh, all I saw in the whole of my county was two students on a roof. That was it. That was the protest. It's like two students on a roof protesting yeah, that, against the, the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was it. And I was like, well, what the hell has this country come to in, what, 20 years since then? We've now just got two people protesting. That's that's worrying and disappointing. Uh, if they'd have texted me, I would have joined them. I didn't know they were out there. So, uh, oh well. But I think you have a very gloomy view on, on the country that you're living in. It, it, it isn't that. I mean. Yeah, it's British. I, I have, <laughs> I, it's very British to have that, yes. And I, I mean, I have some problems with the, the Brexit thing, I must admit. But uh, otherwise, I think, I mean, you, you have, you're talking about protests. You had this. Uh, Extinction Rebellion thing that was huge yeah. 
for quite some time and it might come back again. Uh, I, I'm not, think, I, I don't agree with everything that. that you're saying, but it's, it's a big movement. Yeah, I, th I think uh, there was an interesting handling for that. It happened in the world in January because there was a lot of rebellions going on in December, January, like in Hong Kong. There was Paris was having trouble. Germany was starting it. And then suddenly a, some little invisible thing arrived and it's all disappeared. Oh, conspiracy. Nice. Yeah, but it's, just I mean, you have a point. I mean, just saying, just saying. Yeah. No, but it's interesting. I mean, I can, I can, I don't have any problems uh, thinking that maybe this, um, well, on a general plane, on a general level, uh, that nothing happens uh, randomly. I mean, there, there, is a, there is a meaning in everything, philosophically speaking, uh, spiritually speaking. I think there is, a, there is a meaning to everything that happens, both on the personal level and, and, and on the level of all humankind. So in that in that sense, uh, I think th there may be some kind of lesson or some kind of thing that is supposed to come out of this pandemic. But to think that it was something that some kind of I don't know what does what is it that David Icke calls it the cult um, decided cult. that now yeah. we should uh, let's start a pandemic to stop all these protests because these protests are are, are way too uh well we, we can't control these people I, yeah. I i don't really buy into that but it's 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 interesting to hear people talk about it it's fascinating uh, mm. i don't mind i don't mind it it's it, we're in a day and age where i think where a lot of people don't believe anything now um we're starting to doubt our own names uh or our own past or our own like am i a man should i be a man there's, yeah. there's a whole there's a whole uh questioning going on over the last year like is this true is this fiction um, should I be doing that? Should I want that? Should I eat that? I shouldn't eat that. It's it's, it's a wild uh, tsunami of questions that are, mm. we're all sort of drowning in at the moment. Maybe we're all living in an uh, in an illusion anyway, in the Matrix. Yeah, maybe we and, are. Uh, you are the interface, and I'm <laughs> for, for my for me, and I'm I'm the interface for you, and the, okay. I'm, I'm just. You are the port. What I see here is a portal of, uh, is a is a portal into your uh, being, your inner being, and my okay. body here is is your portal into my. We can kind of sense that there is something in there, but yes, but 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 the whole the rest of it is just uh, like icons on a on a. I heard this from. Uh, I think it's called Donald Hoffman. Is it? He's a scientist, very fascinating guy who's studying uh, the existence of consciousness and what is consciousness. You should should look 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 him up actually. Okay, Donald Hoffman. Uh, so he he calls the physical reality that we see around us. He likens it with uh, icons on a uh, on a desktop on a computer. Yeah. So it's the interface. Okay. But what is really going on is something completely different because, I mean, at, we all know that it's 99.9999999% space anyway, everything yes. that's in here. So, I mean, matter is, matter doesn't matter, actually. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> although it's I don't know why I came like, into, why yeah. I went, went, went all this way, but anyway. No. Well, you interfaced with me and that was your problem. You, you, <laughs> you got infected with something. I know. <laughs> So, do excuse me, I just need a drink. Sure. What do you say? Are we? Uh, should we wrap this up, or have have we solved some of the big big uh, questions in life? Hey, you, that, maybe that wasn't the point. I don't know. Um, it's your call. It's your show. Your mission. Um, you find out what you need to. Uh, you've got an opportunity to take me down here with some bullets. You might have some on your desk. I think you should take that chance. <laughs> I don't have any bullets. Uh, oh. have any bullets but, um, you have mostly you space. Eat, I have mostly space. 99.99% space. Yeah. Just compress a little bit of it and throw it at me. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see here. Well, you said something before about... Um, uh, no, I guess... I guess we have we have covered most of the things that I wanted to talk to you about. There was something I, you wanted I think to come back on. I can't recall what it was. There was. Uh, I can't really remember. What was it? Was it Sweden? We have talked about yeah. Sweden. We've covered Sweden. Yes. 
great mm. country, nice butter. Uh, nice butter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, we can well. we can just we can just wrap it wrap it up by coming back to what we were talking about uh, in the beginning, namely your your podcast and what you okay. think you will be able to achieve with this, because I think it's a brilliant oh. idea that you you are reaching out to people who who uh, have well, yeah. having these these problems and this this. Um, this thinking trap. So what's what's your next steps here? What's what are you looking forward to doing in, with this with this thing, this podcast? I'm looking forward to getting out and meeting people and taking whatever opportunity I can to record a tiny unit of time to then share with everyone. Um I want to be doing this more. In in my life so far, I think in the last 15 to 20 years, there's not been a a few days gone by where I haven't wanted to be dead. I've just acted like I'm done with this. This is just pointless. There is, what is the point? I don't, I don't see any reason for it anymore. Um, you could say fortuitously that I didn't have the balls to do it. Uh, I also have pride. I didn't end my life because I wouldn't want anyone to have to deal with my chaos afterwards. So I joked with a friend recently that if you ever see my house in perfect order and everything sorted, that'll be the time to get worried because that's probably right. I can go now. It's not going to be chaos for anyone. Um, but on a pride sense, I can't give up as a failure. So I need to push on and do something. I know fundamentally I want to entertain. I've known it since I was a kid, but I can entertain and and enlighten people or, or lighten them. You know, let's, let's dump the prefix of N and just go with lighten. Um, I can do that. All the things that have excited me are to do with arts or creativity. So I want to bring that into what I'm doing, but I don't want to get bogged down with technology. And I think fundamentally, uh, I could go all hippie here, but communication is a universal solvent. And being in communication with people in recent weeks has gotten me out of that mire. It's like where I can actually wake up and I'm actually excited and looking forward to doing things. You know, I'm looking forward to speaking to you today. Looking forward to doing such things. It's actually, um, it gives a sense of worth. And uh, that's what I want to do. I want to take that sense of worth that I pick up from other people and maybe amplify it and spill it and spew it out across the population. If it helps. Sounds fantastic. And you have a daughter as well? 10-year-old daughter? I do. I have a 10-year-old daughter. Um, she has... Challenges. She gives you meaning in life, of course, also. Oh, it's, it's, it's always got me on the ropes with that question. Um, it's, I didn't like being a father for most of the time because I don't consider myself to be good at it. And I find when you're not good at something, you don't enjoy it. There's, there's not, no one can lie to me and say they enjoy doing something that they're not good at. You only enjoy what you win at. Um, and if but isn't, I, it, isn't, it, isn't there a difference between uh, taking care of a human being and, and uh, like... Well, you're assuming I am. <laughs> um, Slight, slightly. Yeah, I, I'm, I feel I could have been a lot better. I know it's, it's one of those depressive things about potentiality. I know I should have and could have done better. Uh, and I haven't. So I'll live with that. I'll have to deal with that. Um, but as a result, I feel my daughter has issues um, socially, educationally. There's a there's a creative genius in there, um, and I want to support and help her on that front. But I've also got to protect her from the system, the state. Uh, if it gets they get too involved in her problems in life, um, so that's going to be a battle. So I haven't I haven't enjoyed being a father. There's moments. You know, I, I, maybe I'm a bit like Jordan Peterson. It's like there are moments where life is great, but on the whole, it's pretty sucky. Um, and, and that's where I've come from. Um, but in recent days, all has been good. Um, mm. But today she's had a situation at school which she's revealed something to a person who's helping her that she's never spoke to me or a mum about. And it, we're both like, wow, a 10-year-old shouldn't be saying things like that. Okay. Um so yeah, I, I'm a father, but I'm not the best. Uh, I could always per the. No one is. No one is the best. No one is the best father. No one is no, the best father. I, I shouldn't compare myself to others, but uh, 
I see when I see other children of her age enjoying or engaging in life more, it does it sort of hits you like a punch. It's sort of like, what should I have done different? So uh, yeah, hopefully I can address those things. Maybe maybe there's no real point in in um, in pondering over what has happened because I mean every day life starts anew, so to speak. I mean you can't yeah. really what has happened has happened. Don't you agree? You just have to, totally. I mean, you learn from lessons, but then just do something different next day if you want to. There's a, there's a fundamental with me that is a, a big problem. I learn a lot, but doing something with that learning is the issue for me. Hence where I was talking about the thinking trap originally. Mm. I've seen and experienced a lot, but and you could say I have learned, but I haven't put it into action since. That's been a problem. That's been the predominant problem for my life. I've wound up bankrupt because of lack of action. I've known the situation's coming, but I've capitulated or, or whatever. It's the lack of action has been my problem. Do, would you say that you, at that point, knew exactly what you actually should have been doing? Yeah, and yeah. Didn't? work more. Yeah, produce more. Simple. Well, work and produce, that's very vague. I mean, you should have, uh, that's what everybody's, everybody says. Yeah. Did you know but, in more detail? Did you know more exactly what what kind of mindset you should should, should have to in order to achieve those things? Or I, I were you afraid what, that were you afraid to change your inner your yourself in a way uh, to see if you might be somebody else inside there than you thought it that you were? I don't know. I I due to the accumulation of losses over time, I found my body incredibly heavy and tiresome. So I could be up in the morning and within an hour, I just want to go back to bed. Just really tired. I'd lost so much time in production by just feeling heavy, lethargic, slow. I just know I could probably have produced two or three times more than what I have. In this lifetime, I could have done four or five times more than what I have. Um, that was my error. And, and I wouldn't have had the issues had I been more productive uh, and more active in the actual world and universe instead of stuck in here, mulling, learning. Because, um, you know, you can you can go to university and learn a lot of stuff, but you come out of that university and you're in debt. You haven't actually achieved anything yet. Mm. And I've probably just been sitting in university. I, I didn't hear the class bell. I didn't see everyone go home. I just sat there and carried on learning. Um, which, if you don't use it... Think, thinking is really overrated, I must say. Yes, it's, 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 it's wildly overrated. When people I mean, go, it oh, is. Oh, you're real. so smart. You're so this. And so, I'd rather not be. I'd rather be uh, simple. I'd rather just be happy to go do work, go home, and or yeah. do overtime, and work all the hours God sends, and go home and just watch a TV program. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, probably not, but sometimes I do feel that. Think by think from your heart. If if that could be called thinking, I don't, I don't think it's thinking. <laughs> yeah, use your heart and your passion. Follow your passion. That's what they say. You know, these yeah, the spiritual people. It, follow your passion. Yeah, with with passions for me is um, I love music and I love film. And I get a, I've only noticed it in recent months that I get an odd phenomena. If I watch a film that's really good, I'm full of energy for hours afterwards. If mm. I put an album on in the evening, I can't sleep. That's me done. I have to avoid music after three or four o'clock because because it gets I'll so be, yeah up, energized. It, it really hits me, and it's um, it's a bit scary. Maybe I should have put more music on in my life, and I would probably got more done. I don't know, um, but then I have to deal with all the social circuits of oh well, you need to sleep, you need to be up at work for seven a.m. and blah blah blah, and yeah, that ruins it all. Um, but I'm yeah, I, I don't like social structure. So the nine to five makes me want to vomit, really. Well, then you've chosen the right line of work now, I guess. <laughs> Start, starting a podcast. Yes. Because that's going to have, have you sitting up working at night and sleeping at, uh, during the day. And uh, I mean, yeah. you, you, don't, you don't really have to have any hours. No. I'll just uh, sleep behind the wheel on the way to the next interview. I'll, I'll catch up. Yeah. It'll be fine. Why not? Yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> now, what if... Let, what if uh, this podcast thing that you're going to talk about uh, with people about these, all these failures, these adversities mm. that you've had, what if this leads to 
a situation where this this becomes a success and this this it means that you have found the exact thing that you need and want to do in your life and yeah. it turns out that all these failures as you call them now actually are the gold mine of your future happiness your future success your future career i see what you're doing here um, <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to make you a little bit positive here all oh, right okay yeah. um yeah well have you have you had that thought did you do you even dare no. to have that thought no uh when when i hear people say oh i if i had it all so i wouldn't change a thing i would do it all again i'm like you lying asshole there is no <laughs> way i would do that at all no way uh and i don't think they would um yeah i'd have been happy to have 10 years of failure and then hit the ground running at 30 but when you get to about 45 like me, my concerns are, well, now I'm turning it around. I've only got a few years left. I've got to work really, really hard now. Ooh, I don't know whether I could do that. I probably could because it will motivate me and be, it's a different kind of work. It's not like I'm out in a field digging for 12 hours a day. This is an emotional energy, um, which I could probably handle. Um, yeah, I would look forward to embrace it. I don't think I would dwell on anything from the past. I don't see it as a learning to this because uh, they've just been wrong turns. Uh, I've just been in a, a big hotel with a thousand rooms and now I might have found the room I had originally booked. I just hope no <laughs> one's in it. <laughs> it's a funny metaphor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a little bit, not only a, th a little bit of a thinking trap, it's also a little bit or, or, or very much a um, um, time trap that you're trapped, like oh. hanging, hanging in, a, yeah. in a bind like this uh, between the future and the past. Uh, yeah. And you're actually not living here and now because you are thinking about all the things that went wrong. And now you're saying that you're thinking about how, how little time you have left Oh, yes. I have to be so productive because I only have a few years left, and I all did all this wrong in the past. So you're not, you're, you're actually not here. You're not here. You're yes, either just, there or there. <laughs> yes, you're right. And, and uh, I think the best way to be successful is to be here, is to be present. Yeah, um, yeah I'll, 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 I don't know how I'm going to uh, deal with that. Um, baby steps, <laughs> <laughs> A little meditation, perhaps. Yeah, I've been told to do that. I I really can't do it. I can't sit there. Well, everyone can do. Everyone can do it. You can you can you can start. I can look like I'm can... doing it, but yeah, that's actually, a, that's in, a start. In, in my head, I am thinking a thousand thoughts a minute. And in fact, I the the biggest thing I get from meditation or trying it is guilt because I'm sitting there doing nothing, and I'm like, well, I can't do. That. I can't. I need to. I can't be sitting. I've got to. I've got to go and pay a bill. I've got to go pay the rent. I can't be sitting here doing nothing. So. I end up immediately in self-conflict. So meditation at the moment is quite a, a dangerous thing for me. Okay, so people have probably also told you to read the book uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, have been told. I knew it. I knew it. And yeah. you haven't. No, because in a few minutes' time I'll have gone, who was that guy? Yeah. Because, uh, okay. yeah. yeah. Anyway, you'll have, you'll well, he's, he, he's talking emails. about these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 pitch, pitching guests bombard them with yeah. emails. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll start bombarding you with uh, emails about yeah. Eckhart Tolle now from now on. Then pitch me with present time yeah. solutions. Yeah. 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 I think a little bit of meditation would do the trick, but it's uh, okay. Well, baby steps. Start with one second, and then two seconds, fifteen maybe, seconds. <laughs> maybe I create all these problems because if I got it all right, how dangerous would I be? How causative could I be if I got all my shit together? Now you're onto something. I know. <laughs> It'd be I very dangerous. It yeah. will be very dangerous for all of us. I'm yeah. looking forward to that danger, actually. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, James <laughs> Finney, and good luck with this uh, podcast of yours. Well, thank you. I'm and thank sure you for it's going to be a success. Yeah, no, I'm very welcome. Honored to be here and great to speak with you, sir. <laughs>